Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And the situation in Ukraine uh, just couldn't get any worse than what it already is. But uh, nonetheless, as I was talking to a good friend in the Middle East about the situation, uh, more specifically with Israel, Hezbollah, Iran, uh, Gaza, and how dire that situation is, he stopped me and said, nothing is more dire for the current U.S. administration than the situation that is unraveling in Ukraine. And when he said that, I took a step back and couldn't help but think, what is it so much with Ukraine that has really gotten worse? Well, it couldn't get any worse than the reports that are coming out here in the last 24 hours. First off, this in the Russian media, dzen.ru, uh, translated into English for you, Lavrov, career British and French NATO officers are present in Ukraine. And if that's not bad enough, you've also got uh, uh, this young lady right here, Margarita Simononian, who I actually follow on Twitter. She is an RT reporter there. Uh, she actually was a part of the story that came out here on RT.com. Germany Army discussed strike on the Crimean Bridge. A leaked audio purportedly indicates. Well, I happen to be on VK as well, so I also uh, happen to get the transcript of that actual audio recording. She talked about releasing the audio recording, but more and more, we're starting to see uh, the openness of what's happening out there in uh, Ukraine. And uh, it only gets worse. Then you have German Chancellor appeared to suggest that British and French soldiers have helped Ukraine fire deep strike missiles at Russian targets. Uh, and then, of course, the United States has been there a long time in that region of the world. So uh, we're going we're gonna to look at these things real quick here together. Let me go back here to uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov and I uh, want to share some of this information here with you here uh, in this article. It says there are not only foreign mercenaries in Ukraine, but also career officers, including the British and French Russian Foreign Ministry, Sergei Lavrov, sat at a forum in Atalia, uh, Turkey. Macron called sending troops from Europe to Ukraine a serious topic, and the Russian President Vladimir Putin, speaking about the special military operation, stated that victory will be ours and there will be peace when Russia achieves its goals in the northern military district. Press Secretary of the Russian President Dmitry Peskov on February 27th also announced the inevitability of direct military conflict with NATO in the event sending Western military personnel to Ukraine. So the situation is only about to spiral completely out of control uh, with this, this threat of openly, I should say, openly sending troops to Ukraine. Russia knows they've been fighting American and uh, British troops for quite some time, but this is coming to be becoming to be a real issue there. Anyway, German military leaders allegedly discussed an operation to bomb the Crimean Bridge. RT editor-in-chief Margarita Simeon uh, claimed Friday, citing audio leaked by the Russian security officials. She goes on, this says they discuss how to carry out the attack while maintaining plausible deniability for, for German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, according to her account of the conversation. They also remarked that the German military was keeping its distance from Ukraine conflict, unlike the American and British, who they said had been directly involved for a long time, Simonian claimed. And how long? Have we reported that to you guys already? We have been directly involved, and when our soldiers die in Ukraine, their families are just told they died in a military training exercise, something I've reported to you probably two years ago in regards to that. Anyway, on her VK uh, platform, this is the transcript that she released here by the Germans that were actually discussing <clears throat> the bombing of the bridge. And here we go. Hello, everyone. Grafe, are you in Singapore now? Yes. Okay, we need to verify the information, as you have already heard. Defense Minister Pistorius intends to carefully consider the issue of supplying Taurus missiles to Ukraine. 
we have a meeting planned with him. Everything needs to be discussed so that we can start working on this issue. So far, I do not see uh, the start date of these deliveries has been indicated. It was not like the chancellor told him, I want to get information now. Tomorrow morning, we will make a decision. I haven't heard anything like this. On the contrary, Pister S evaluates this entire ongoing discussion. Nobody knows why federally federal chancellor is blocking these supplies. Of course, the most incredible rumors appear. Let me give you an example. Yesterday, a journalist who was very close to the chancellor called me. She heard somewhere in Munich that Taurus missiles would not work. I asked, who told her this? She replied that someone in the military uniform told her this. Of course, this is a low-level source of information. But the journalist latched <clears throat> onto these words and wants to make a big deal out of it with the headline, now we know the reason why the Chancellor refuses to send Taurus missiles. They won't work. This is all stupidity. Such topics are available only to a limited circle of people. However, we see what kind of nonsense is spreading in the meantime. They are talking completely nonsense. I want to agree on this issue with you so that we do not move in the wrong direction. First of all, I know I, I now have a question for Frosted. And Finsk, has anyone talked to you about this topic? Did Fr uh, Fruiting contact you? Frostad answers, no, I only communicated with Grafe. Finsk, the same thing, I only communicated with Grafe. Eight months. Gerhard. <clears throat> Secondly, we cannot shorten the time because if we do this, then an erroneous use may occur. <clears throat> A rocket may fall in a, on a kindergarten, and again, there will be civilian casualties. These aspects must be taken into account. It should be noted during the negotiations that we cannot do anything without the manufacturer. They can equip, rearm, and deliver the first missiles. We can catch up with the production a little, a little, but we should wait for 20 pieces of, uh, to accumulate. We can transfer five at a time. The delivery time of these missiles directly depends on the industry. With us. Who will pay for them? The question will arise, where the information goes. If we are talking about target information, which ideally includes satellite images with maximum accuracy of up to three meters, then we must first process them in Buchel. I think that regardless of this, it is possible to somehow organize the exchange of information between Buchel and Schron Schronhausen, or we can work out the possibility of transferring information to Poland. Now Poland's brought into the mix, doing it where you can get it there by, by car. This issue needs to be looked at more closely. Options will certainly appear. If we are supported, then we are worst case scenario. We can even travel by car, which will reduce response time. Of course, we will not be able to respond within an hour since we will need to give our consent. In the best case scenario, only six hours after receiving the information will the aircraft be able to carry out the order. To hit certain targets, an accuracy of more than three meters is sufficient. But if it is necessary to clarify the target, you need to work with satellite images that allow it to be modeled. And then the response time can be up to 12 hours. It all depends on the goal. I have not studied this issue in detail, but I believe that this option is also possible. All we need to say is that we need to think about how to organize a transfer of information. Gerhardt says, do you think it is possible to hope that Ukraine will be able to do everything on its own. After all, it's known that there are many people there in civilian clothes who speak with an American accent, so it is quite possible that they will soon be able to use it themselves. After all, they all have all the satellite images. <laughs> there are many civilian uh, people there, civilian clothes who speak with an American accent. What do you know? Defense. Yes, they get them from us. I would also like to brief touch on air defense issues. We must think carefully about having equipment in Kiev to receive information from the IABG and the NDK. We have to provide this to them, so I have to fly there on February 21st. We need to plan everything optimally, not like it was with Storm Shadow, 
when they plan control points, we need to think about how to fly around or fly below the radar field of view. If everything is prepared, the training will be more effective. And then we can again return to the question of the number of missiles. If you give 50 pieces, they will be used up very quickly. Gearhearts. That's right. It won't change the course of the war. So we don't want to transfer them all and not all at the same time. Perhaps 50 of the first uh, tranche then perhaps there will be another tranche of 50 missiles. This is completely understandable, but all this is big politics. I guess there's actually something behind it. I learned from my French and British colleagues that, in fact, the situation with these Storm Shadow and Scalp rifles is the same as with the Winchester rifles. They may have asked, why should we supply the next batch of missiles since we have already, they did it, and let Germany do it now? Maybe Mr. Froschet wants to say something on this topic. Well, he does respond. Let me add a little pro, uh, pragmatism. I want to share my thoughts on the characteristics of the storm shadow. We are talking about air defenses, flight time, flight altitude, and so on. I came to the conclusion that there are two interesting targets. The bridge, here it is, the bridge to the east and the ammunition depots that are higher. The bridge in the east is difficult to reach. It is fairly small target, but the Taurus can do it. And ammunition depots can, hit, can also hit. If we take all this into account and compare it with how much Storm Shadow and uh, Himars were used, then I have a question. Is our goal a bridge or military warehouses? Is this achievable with the current shortcomings that... R.E.D. and uh, why Patriot have, and I, I've come to the conclusion that limiting factor is that they usually only have 24 charges. That's understandable, Gerhardt's answers. Fort Stout continues, it makes sense to join Ukraine to the TPP. It will take a week. I think it makes sense to think about task scheduling and centralized planning. Planning task in our connection takes two weeks. But if there is an interest in this, then it can be done faster. If we look at the bridge, then I think that Taurus is not enough. And we need to have an idea of how it can work. And for this, we need data from satellites. I don't know if we are able to prepare Ukrainians for such a task in a short time. And we are talking about a month. What would Taurus attack on the bridge look like? From the operational perspective, I cannot estimate how quickly the Ukrainians will be able to learn to plan such actions and how quickly integration will occur. But since we are talking about bridge and military bases, I understand that they want to get them as soon as possible. I would like to say, Finsk answers, one thing about this destruction of the bridge. We intensively studied this issue and unfortunately came to the conclusion that the bridge, due to its size, is similar to a runway. Therefore, it may not, it may not require 10 or even 20 missiles. There is an opinion that Taurus will succeed if it uses the French Dassault Rafale fighter. Look at there. If it uses the French Dassault Rafale fighter, all they can do, Fence says, is make a hole and damage the bridge. And before we make important statements, we must ourselves. Fronstess interrupts, I'm not pushing the bridge idea. I pragmatically want to understand what they want and what we should teach them. So it turns out that, that when planning these operations, we all need to indicate the main points on the images. They will have goals, but it should be taken into account that when working on small goals, you need to plan more carefully and not analyze pictures in the computer. In the case of confirmed goals, everything is simpler. Planning will take less time. Gerhardt says, we all know that they want to destroy the bridge. What this ultimately means, how they protect it, not only because it has important military strategic, but also political significance. Although they now have a ground corridor, there are certainly concerns if we have direct communication with the Ukrainian armed forces. Therefore, the questions arise, can we use such a trick in a second our people to MBDA? Thus, direct communications with Ukraine will only be through MD MBDA. This is much better than if such connection exists with our Air Force. 
Grafe, Gerhardt, it doesn't matter. We need to make sure that from the very beginning there is no language that makes us a party to the conflict. I like that, right? Got to make sure there's no language that makes us a party to the conflict. Of course, I am exaggerating a little, but if we now tell the minister that we will schedule meetings and travel by car from Poland so that no one notices, this is already participation. We will not do this. If we're talking about manufacturer, then first of all, we should ask M MVDA if they can do this. It does not matter whether our people then do this or in Buchel or in Schroeschenhaus, Schrobenhausen, it will still, it is still participation. And I think that this should not be done. At the very beginning, we identified this as a core element of the red line. In other words, what he's saying, he knows that that's Russia's red line. So we will be involved in training. Let's say that we will prepare a roadmap. It is necessary to divide the learning process into parts. The long track will last four months. We will train them thoroughly, including the working on the bridge option. Short, we will be designed for two weeks so that we can use the missiles as early as possible. If they already are trained, then we will ask whether the British are ready to deal with them at this stage. I believe that such actions will be correct. Just imagine if the press finds out that our people are Schrodenhausen or that we are driving cars somewhere in Poland. I consider this option unacceptable. All the secrecy, right? Gerhards, if such a political decision is made, we must say that the Ukrainians must come to us. We first need to know if such a policy decision is not directly involved in the task planning, in which case the training will take a little longer. They will be able to perform more complex tasks, which is quite possible. They already have some experience and use high-tech equipment. If it is possible to avoid direct participation, we cannot participate in task planning. Do it in Buchel and then forward it then forward it to them. For Germany, this is a red line. You can train them for two months during which they will not learn everything, but they will be able to do something. We just have to make sure that they are able to process all the information and work with all the parameters. And Grafe, you know, it just it just goes on and on and on and on. You know, if as you look at all this on here, uh Amazing information. Uh, boy, the Russians really got a gold mine when they intercepted all this information right here. And uh, so I, I won't be airing everything that I read on here in this broadcast, but I will include for you a, uh, a, the, so you can actually read this for yourself. Uh, anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We are certainly in a world of a mess here.